Hello everybody. What a glorious Saturday afternoon. And I've not done a lawnmower vid for a while, so I'm not gonna do any gardening. I'm waiting for some parts to come on the transit van, so let's do a lawnmower vid. Right, well I've got one of these little sovereign lawn mowers which I've, um, you saw in one of the other videos where I rubbed down the deck and I've sprayed the deck red now. Let me show you that, I'll go and get it for you. And um, another little thing I do, this has still got to be lacquered by the way, but uh, let me show you what else I've done to the front of it. Well as you can see here, I've put this graphic on. Now I've just got a vinyl cutter which I uh, make these graphics out of, so um, I think you'll agree that it looks a lot better with the graphic on the front there so I can make these as I said to you so I've put it on the lawnmower deck as it is there at the moment the whole deck is ready for a spray gloss now this is just a um, rattle can paint which you get normally from um, a shop but we get ours from a car boot sale and pay a lot cheaper than buying it from brand new so what I'm going to do is to um, give this now its coat of lacquer and that will give it the uh, weather protection and the hardness to stop it from uh, deteriorating if someone accidentally spills petrol on it. See, if you spill petrol on this paint or one of those spray can lacquers you normally get out of the do-it-yourself superstores or your car factors shops or whatever, they'll actually not withstand petrol and they'll start to bubble up and all that. So it's got to really be a lot of 2K lacquer or an enamel lacquer or an enamel paint. If you just want to paint these with an enamel paint, something like Smooth Hammerite, for example, that would be ideal because they're impervious to um, the petrol. But uh, as I say, I'm just going to give this a 2K coat of lacquer now, so I'll let you watch while I do this. Right, well, here we are. I brought it inside because it was a little bit windy outside. So um, I've got my 2K lacquer, which is Max Mir, in the uh, spray gun. Right, got to turn the fan on. So you might not be able to hear me. Got a blocked up spray gun. There we go. I don't know if you noticed or not, but my spray gun was ch -ch 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 spitting. That's because <laughs> other people have been using my gun and they don't clean it properly. That's the problem. So I've just had to go with it though, because um, otherwise it would have been tipping that lacquer out into another container, getting another gun out, and so I've had to go with it. So we're gonna carry on, because I don't want to waste that lacquer. So we'll let that flash off for 10 minutes and then we'll hit it with a second coat, a nice wet coat this time. And But the technique, don't worry about the technique, I'm having to adapt on, on the fly, so to speak, to get over the gun pulsing and spitting. So I'm not spraying in my normal flow pattern, so to speak. So we'll let that go off for 10 minutes and then um, we'll hit the second coat. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay then, uh, let's sit down here. 
Now, I thought the weather was lovely. The, the weather was lovely and bright, but now it's become overcast, typical, isn't it? But I'm going to carry on anyway because I'm out in the garden and it's pretty nice out here. This is our motor. This is a, as you can see, a classic 35 classic Briggs and Stratton engine. And what's handy is that we've got a hole in the table for the shaft to go through. And that means you can sit the engine flat on the table and just sort of rotate it as, as and when you need to get around the other side of the engine. So that's quite a good tip. It wasn't intentional. It was a hole that got broken where the umbrella used to go through the centre of the table. But anyway, so that, while that's drying, I'm going to start uh, just taking apart this engine. Now this is a basic service now what I'm going to do. And as you remember, this engine was running. But... Um, and it's in pretty good condition. Look, the air filter is pretty clean, although I will give it a clean out as well. And the springs are all on there, which is fine. And I'll also take this out of cowling now, because I'll give this a, a, a coat of paint. I may paint the fuel tank, yeah, I'm not sure. And I may paint the, um, the air filter. It's just a matter of touching it up. So for the sake of doing that, making it look a bit more presentable, I'll probably end up doing it. So um, yeah, it's come over a bit windy now, so um, that's what I couldn't paint for outside. Now again, my full socket set is out the front, but um, this is another auxiliary socket set I've got, and it's a matter of finding the right sockets for the job, so to speak. So yeah, I find it's quite therapeutic, actually, as I say. The, uh, the deck's all ready to go now. I got a phone call the other night, about half past nine and it was Gary and he said um, do you fancy going for a ride we was it we was uh, in a <laughs> we was in our night gear me and Sharon just relaxing on the sofa getting ready to go to bed when we go to bed we don't actually go to bed she watches telly and I've um, got the laptop on and that's when I normally answer questions and emails and stuff like that in the evening while she's watching telly in bed and anyway so before he said oh I've been on the Facebook he said uh, a woman's got a flymo lawnmower and she wanted 25 quid I think she said for it he said and, uh, he'd come back with 15 and then she emailed him back saying if you come tonight you can have it for a tenner so he just wanted a bit of company it meant jumping in the car for a 20 minute car journey but anyway we got it and this this one sitting over here and she she was uh, saying that it does run but it chugs up and down uh, and it's, well, it's, it's a fly mower one with a roller on the back. It's got an actual roller, so it's quite an expensive mower, but it seems to be okay. It just wants a good clean up, maybe, maybe spray the deck, see, see how the bodywork is on it. But um, yeah, so he got that for a tenner. And a lot of people say to me, oh, where'd you find your lawnmowers? I get lots of private messages and comments and stuff like that. So oh, where'd you get your lawnmowers from? Well, you've just got to be a bit, of a bit inventive. As I say, like, I've, I visit auctions. You don't always find them at auctions, but when they are there, they're there. Uh, we see them on eBay locally and we'll just leave the person a message on Facebook and ask if they want to do a cash offer and nine times out of ten they're glad to get them out of the way. Or even people we know for example, they sort of have neighbours or whatever and they say you can get someone to get rid of your old mower if you've got it in the garden and you don't want it no more. Because nine times out of ten they go down the superstore, the B&Q superstore and they go and buy these, um, these new ones, these, these uh, Chinese engine ones straight from B&Q for about £150, but trouble is, they don't actually last very long. You know, so, um, unfortunately, they may look lovely and shiny and that, but they're probably okay for what they do, I suppose, but, um, you know, you, you get what you pay for at the end of the day. And you wouldn't believe it, it's actually started to rain. I'm hoping it's just going to blow over. So, that comes out of there. Yeah, it stopped. Nearly, well, virtually stopped. It was just a cloud, cloud blowing over. So right, I'm just going to pull this fuel tank off now and I'm leaving the actual mechanism on, just tip the tank and the whole lot comes off in one go, as you can see there. Now, as I say, for the sake of me servicing this, I'm going to put a new gasket and diaphragm in here because I'm going to be selling this mower and it's just peace of mind to know that it's got a new, the carb's been serviced. So that's what I'm going to do anyway. So, so now that's off. Again, these five Phillips screws are what take the, the carburetor off of the fuel tank. And you really want to take this off because you don't know what sort of rubbish is in the um, fuel tank either. So if you've got an airline, just blow it out as well. There is good petrol in here. It's starting to rain again. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here because, as I said, I think it's going to blow over. 
as I said, it's going to blow over. The wind's whipping up and it's getting heavier. <laughs> Typical, isn't it? I was all set for a lovely afternoon out here. That's what I come out here for. Just for a bit of peace and quiet in the garden, listening to the birds. Yeah, that looks in pretty good nick anyway, but um, I will change it. And that's the little thing that causes all the problems with them running up and down. Chugging. So I will change that anyway. Oh, I don't know. You probably can't hear that rain on the roof because I've got the little microphone on. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Right, so here's the carb anyway. So um, it's absolutely hammering down out there now. I've left the main body of the engine out there. It should be okay. But uh, I've got some carb cleaner here, which there's a little spring underneath that old diaphragm, which I'm going to remove. Just lay it there. And I like to just give these a good spray down. With the carb cleaner. Just let it set for a bit. And then what I do, I'll give it a blow through with the air hose. So, um... It clears out all them jets. That carb cleaner spray is very, very good stuff. As I say, it really gets rid of all the gum that's in there. Yeah, look outside, look. That's how it's just changed. Can you see that? Can you see that rain on that table out there, look? There's my poor little engine, look. I was sitting out there a minute ago. Still, the uh, garden would uh, enjoy that because it's been dry for quite a long time. And I, oh, I can hear thunder as well. And I'd never make a blinking weatherman, would I? unbelievable and it's slowing down now but um i think i just timed that right right okay so just right i normally give these fuel tanks as i say a wipe over as well in actual fact this one as it it was also running as you know and uh it was in pretty good nick. Now normally, as I say, I'll drain this down, but I don't think I'm gonna need to drain this one out. I'll just uh, give it a little bit of a wipe over, get rid of all the rubbish off it, all the grease. So realistically, it's only really the top of this fuel tank that's, uh, could probably do with a little coat of paint. The rest of it seems to be okay. So I'll just paint the top of it. Just to mask up the things we don't wanna get paint on. For example, the gasket face. Again, you don't have to do this. As I say, you can put it back on, but it just adds to the uh, visual aspect of it when you're when you're selling it. It doesn't make the mower go any faster or cut, cut any better, nor does spraying the deck, but it will, will guarantee that, um, that you might be able to get a little bit more money for it. And again, just down with these little labels down the front here. Put it on as straight as you can. Because uh, obviously you want to retain the label and to make it look as authentic as you can. So just cover up the labels. Following the straight edges of the labels. Give it a good rub down in place. And then literally just cut round. And I'll just cover up that one along there. In case I get any overspray. Just like that. I'm not painting it all up. I'm just literally putting this on loose. It doesn't really matter, but uh, I'll just tape the head up because you don't want no paint getting into the threads. Fold that over. There we go. Just like that. Right. Well, I'm going to do the rest to the other little bits, like the cover and the uh, air filter cap, and I'll see you in a minute.
Right, here she is, refurbished, all painted up and ready to go. Blade's been sharpened, everything's been done to it. Put back to normal, everything's been painted as you've seen. So this is going to be the first start up of it. So let's just have a quick look around it first, I'll show you the condition. Well, as you can see, it's looking absolutely lovely. Nice and tidy. I've gone to the extent of painting the wheels, as I've told you before. I always spray them with a bit of black, just like the handles have been sprayed in as well. And the covers there, as you know. All cables are neatly cable tied all the way up to the handle, the operation, so that's that. And as you can see, she's looking rather smart. Also, the exhaust has been painted with heat paint as well, so that was all rusted, and it's just a matter of doing that to make it look a bit more presentable. And as I say, well, I don't know, I've not started it. It's totally cold. Look, put my hand on the exhaust. This is the first time starting. Come down, it's slow down. There you go, another successful cheap lawnmower. I paid, um, what did I pay for this one, 25 quid? This is a self-drive model and it's gonna be going on eBay for around the 100 pound mark. As you can see, it looks totally immaculate. It really has been refurbished. I'll show you underneath what I do to the blades as well. Let's get underneath. As you can see there, I go to the problem, uh, the trouble of actually sharpening the blades. I had an all wonky edge on that, but um, as you can see it's uh, been repainted and the profile of the blade has been replaced uh, re-edged rather uh, the guards on there as you can see there the belts on there it's a self-drive lawnmower and if we go back down we've got our lovely sovereign sticker which I've made myself on my vinyl cutter anyway there you go that's that saga of this lawnmower finished now We'll see you again in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget, rate, comment and subscribe. And look at our other videos as well. We've got different channels. We've got different playlists in our channel where we've got car repairs, we've got gardening, we've got the lawnmower repairs, other retro stuff which we repair as well. Treat it as a hobby. That's all you've got to do. See you later.